Hello, welcome back everybody. Thank you for joining me again in my lessons. Uh, in case this is the first time you come across one of my videos, it might make sense for you uh, to watch the intro video of this lesson sequence as well, because there I explain in greater detail what my lessons are all about, whom they are targeted at, and what exactly you're going to learn in my course. But uh, in case uh, you are a student who've already seen that course, I'm happy you came back. This is going to be our very first lesson on German grammar for complete beginners. And uh, I have invested a lot of thinking on what to do first, because it is very difficult to build your first German sentences without having studied five to ten different grammatical concepts already. And one of the most important ones I find is German sentence structure or how to arrange the elements of a sentence so that it makes sense in German. And I think this is really one of the most challenging aspects that uh, speakers of other languages normally encounter when they want to study German. Where on earth am I supposed to put the verb? That is the biggest question. And I would like to start by answering this question, at least in the case of main clauses for today. So you might already know German, as most other languages as well, differentiates between main clauses and subordinate clauses. This lesson is on main clauses only because they can stand by themselves. They do not need a subordinate class clause. However, you can never have a subordinate clause without a main clause. So this is where to start. I want to show you a couple of uh, structural items and also example sentences, but as a general formula, the German sentence structure is quite similar to the English one, at least for main clauses. So, as in English, you typically start with the subject of the sentence, so who is doing the action of the sentence. Then in second position, this is very important, in second position you normally have the conjugated verb, I will explain to you in a later lesson what conjugation means in case that term is new to you. So we put the verb in the second position. And then sometimes you have many other elements in a sentence as well, although ne not necessarily. Uh, those additions can typically contain objects like direct objects, indirect objects, descriptions of location, time and place, and many different things. So I categorize them as additions here. But the important learning for main clauses is verb in second place. Even the position of the subject and the additions can be switched depending on what you would like to emphasize. So in an English sentence, I read the book. This exactly fits this structure here. I am the subject of the sentence. I am the one doing the activity. Read the activity is the verb put in the second position here. And the book in this case is a direct object, which is counted as an addition, that comes after the verb. In English, you cannot say the book read I. In German, you can, if you want to emphasize that it is the book that you are reading and not the newspaper. So subject and additions might be interchangeable. The position of the verb in the main clause is not flexible, fixed in second position. So what does this look like? We can differentiate between two different sentence types. Here I will call them sentence type A and sentence type B. And the position of the verb according to the sentence type might differ, like is going to differ. So let's look at our first example sentence here. Klaus liebt Musik. Klaus liebt Musik. This sentence means Klaus loves music. So, of course, I do not expect you to understand or build example sentences of your own because I haven't taught you a single item of vocabulary yet. But I have chosen words and sentences that have, at least by the sound of it, some similarity to English. So you at least know which of these words corresponds to which word in English. So, musik, music do look quite similar. And this is how I'm going to construct my example sentences in the beginning so that you can passively understand them, although you have not studied the individual words yet. Okay, this is 
a statement. A statement meaning it has it has a full stop at the end, subject, verb, object structure. So in position one of the sentence, we have Klaus, who is the subject, the actor of the sentence. In position two, our verb in conjugated form, meaning it is inflected. It corresponds to Klaus as the first person singular. In no, um, yeah. And then music as the object of the sentence in the third position, or let's just call it the rest, where all the additions go. And same sentence structure applies when we ask so-called W questions. W questions in English and in German are, like in English you say when, who, why, how, where, they all start with a W. Uh, in German as well, most of them start with W. Wer, wann, wie, wo, was, warum, etc. I will teach you how to ask open-ended and closed-ended questions in a very early lesson. For now, I only want you to know where to put the verb in a W question. You don't need to remember any question words for the time being, but the verb is in position two. So position one is the question word here, wer, who, ist is our verb in position two, and das corresponding to that, and then you have a question mark in the end to formulate a perfect open-ended question or W question. So to summarize, Statements and W questions belong to sentence type A, and in sentence type A, the conjugated verb will be put in the second position of the sentence. Okay, now I would like to contrast that with sentence type B. The position of the verb in sentence type B, in contrast to type A, is not in the second, but in the first position of the sentence. So in that case, we will start the sentence with the verb. And that is normally the case when we ask yes, no questions, meaning closed ended questions. There is no elaborate answer to them. You typically only answer with yes or no. So in this type of question, we will start with the verb. Bist du Katrin? Meaning, are you Katrin? Bist is the conjugated form of the verb to be. Du is the second person singular and, oh yes, I am finding uh, my first mistake here, I'm very sorry for that, it of course needs to be spelled like this. We only use capital letters for nouns and names like Katrin, so Katrin is spelled with a capital K. Katrin in the third position of the sentence, so we start with the verb. And the same also applies when we formulate commands or so-called imperatives, like when we give orders to someone, do this get me that, bring me this. Also here, this was the auto correction. This of course needs to be spelled like this. In a command, our typical example sentence could be, gib mir das Geld. Gib mir das Geld. Give me the money. In that case, the verb, which is put in the imperative mode, will be placed in the first position of the sentence. So generally, when you when you try to construct a main clause, the first question you should ask yourself, am I trying to construct a sentence type A or a sentence type B? Any regular statement, as we highlighted above, will be sentence type A with the verb in second position, same as W questions. And for sentence type B, like yes, no question and commands, you will have to start the sentence with the verb. And now we can look at a couple of more um, example sentences and also do some exercises together. So, in this exercise here, I would like you to identify what sentence type we are seeing. So, again, very importantly, I don't expect you to be able to translate each and every element of the sentence and why it is formulated like this, but I chose example sentences that sound similar to their English corresponding versions in, in the vocabulary, in the phonology of the vocabulary. So I would like you to passively understand them, not yet be actively using them. Okay, so we look at our first sentence here. We see, hilf mir bitte, hilf mir bitte. That sentence means, help me please. And we already see in the exclamation mark, this is a command. We are giving a command, although it is very polite. It is more a polite request to someone, but it is formulated in the imperative mode. So, corresponding to the tables I just showed you, this means we are having here sentence type B with the verb 
in the first position. Hilf, hilf, which means to help, help me. Hilf mir, first position of the sentence, sentence type B. Second one. Siehst du mich? Siehst du mich? Do you see me? So you see with the uh, with the question mark at the end we're having a question here but which kind of question is it is it a yes no question or is it an open ended question ah do you see me is a yes no question therefore also sentence type b the verb is placed in first position so if you directly translate word by word the question is see you me see you me so in english for a yes no question you actually need this do, do in front, and then you place the actual verb later in the sentence one more time. We do not have this corresponding version of do in German. We directly ask, see you me, siehst du mich, first position. Next one. Wann kommst du? Wann kommst du? When do you come or when will you come can also be translated in future tense. This is a question once again. However, this time we have a question word in the beginning. When, okay, wann, wann. So this is actually a so-called W question, which makes it sentence type A. And therefore, you see, we have the conjugated verb kommst, kommst, in the second position of the sentence. Easy, right? Okay, next sentence. Er lernt jeden Tag Deutsch. Er lernt jeden Tag Deutsch. This is the first interesting item uh, of, of pronunciation. S-C-H. Here, S-C-H sounds like, in, in German, like sh, sh. Er lernt jeden Tag Deutsch. Meaning, he studies German every day. Or, word by word, he studies every day German. That's how we say. But the important thing here is merely only where to put the verb. And you see, this is a statement. It has a full stop at the end. It just gives uh, information about who is doing what, when. And you see, the verb lernen, lernen, is in the second position of the sentence, directly after the subject. That makes it sentence type A. Okay. When we now want to ask that person directly, do you study German? We will say, lernst du Deutsch? Lernst du Deutsch? Do you study German? Okay, in this case we have a question, of course, and it is a yes, no question. You can answer, yes, I study German. No, I don't study German. And since this is a yes, no question, that makes it sentence type B, because we find the verb in the first position of the sentence. And now lastly, if his answer is no, we will tell him, oh well, you should go study German. Lerne Deutsch. Lerne Deutsch. And now we are giving a command to someone or maybe a recommendation if we were to formulate it a little bit more politely. But since this is a command and it has an ex exclamation mark at the end, it corresponds to sentence type B as well, because we are starting the command with the verb in the first position of the sentence. And that is actually all you need to know for the beginning. So I would like to go up one more time because those tables here actually contain the relevant points of this lesson. Ask yourself what kind of sentence you're trying to construct. And depending on that, statement W questions or for type B, yes, no questions and commands. You will need to put the verb in different positions in the sentence. And I don't want you to worry about all of these words here, the precise vocabulary and what exactly is an object and what is an addition. All of this comes later. The key message, the takeaway message is remember where to put the verb. Because in the next lesson, I will show you how to conjugate verbs in regular present tense. And I will also show you the irregular verbs for to be and to have. And once we have those, we will be able to construct so many sentences already to get you talking and thinking in German as early as possible. So thank you very much for joining for this lesson. I would love to see you in the next one as well. Please be so kind to subscribe. And if you enjoyed the lesson, please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate very much. It helps enormously. And I will see you next time.
Thank you.